Hi, this is Lei from Goldfish Corner. Welcome back. And today I'd like to talk about a very interesting topic,、uh, samurai and the Japanese goldfish. About two years ago, I gave a talk about the history of Ranchu goldfish.、Uh, one of the friends、uh, named Max asked me, "Hey, can you do a video talking about goldfish and uh, uh, samurai?" Uh, this is a very interesting topic. I actually did a little bit deeper study. Today, I like to share what I learned during the last few months. So, first of all, I'm gonna review the goldfish trading and goldfish history, and then I talk about the early role that samurai played. During the goldfish keeping in Japan, and then I'm gonna talk about some tough time for、uh, samurai during the Edo period. Last but not least, I want to talk about the two signature breeds that were developed by、uh, samurai. So start from the goldfish. Goldfish originated in China. I show this many times, and this is one of those documentary that I found it、uh, back to the 1429, which is in Ming Dynasty. Um, the Ranchu ancestor is displayed in fish and weed painting. Early on, I, I did not find the painting, but I find this little、uh, china bowl with the goldfish、uh, image in the same period time. And then about half year later, I find the actual e copy of the fish and weed painting back to Ming Dynasty. If you interested, you can click link here to see goldfish image、uh, in the fish and weed painting. So let's talk about goldfish tra trading between China and Japan. So the goldfish is loaded in the boat in Ningbo. They left in spring. The southern wind will push the Chinese ships to Japan. And in the summertime, the Chinese trader actually stayed in Nagasaki、uh, for about three, four months. And during the fall, the northern wind sent them back to China. So you can see the whole trip took over half a year, nearly a year. So the goldfish. Was not only the、uh, commodity,、uh, but also a pad to those Chinese traders. Now here is the first recorded import in 1502 in Muromachi period, and I actually highlight、um, this、uh, sentence. Well, early on, only rich samurai lord can afford uh, buying uh, Chinese goldfish, and also they have pond to store. Uh, them in their home gardens. That is the first role、uh, samurai played in goldfish keeping. Is the earliest、uh, goldfish keeper in Japan, back to 500 years ago. Now let's talk about、uh, samurai, which is the ruling class in Japan. Samurai was the、uh, military nobility between、uh, 12th century to、uh, 19th century.、Uh, there are many paintings to show samurai's image. Samurai has the、uh, long boat. Uh, samurai knife, and they wear very solid armor. So back then,、uh, Japan was divided in seventy or more regions, and those regions they actually fought each other. That's why samurai was highly in demand. So they actually、uh, well paid a retainer of daimyo until the end of sixteenth century.、Uh, back to the Tokugawa shogunate, which is the Edo period. So the whole Japan united in one nation. Tokugawa actually made a society stable by clearly defining those classes, and they keep each person in that classes. On the top, that's emperor, and go down the bottom. And samurai, which is the warrior class, is on the bottom. But、uh, samurai was still the ruling class of Japan. About ninety percent of the population in Japan is peasant. For the bottom three classes. Uh, peasants, craftsmen, and merchants—they actually pretty busy to make livings. They don't even have、uh, extra money or time to take care of goldfish. Samurai kind of in between the ruling class and bottom class, so they have money and they have time and an appreciation to take care of goldfish. And then the situation kind of turn around. Over 250 years of peace during the Edo period actually ends the samurai class. This is uh, uh, Yukioi Prince actually described. Osaka, which is very busy, you can see a lot of buildings and a lot of people around the streets, and they have more ships coming from the sea.、Uh, so, a couple of signatures back to the Edo period,、uh, the focus on the、uh, economic growth, and、uh, as you can see, the pyramid of the class structure. So, very strict social order, nearly、uh, perpetual peace, and there's no war over the 250 years. And、uh, the other thing I want to highlight is. So the common people、uh, enjoyed 
the popular enjoyment of arts and culture, and and that's allow people to appreciate the goldfish, and and then I was not able to find the goldfish trading or goldfish market picture from the Japan、uh, library, but this one I found it actually the the regular、uh, fish market.、Uh, you can see the market is pretty busy near the river.、Um, there's a lot of stores、um, around the river. This part, which is interesting, you see, they actually has a red fish. It's actually pretty big. I don't think this red fish is is actually goldfish, but it's probably something like red koi,、uh, fish. So you know, people are happy, and、uh, as I said, economic grow. And this actually real picture during the Edo period、uh, was taken from、uh, roughly 1865 to 1866. You can see the street. You can see the houses or mansions around the streets. So very busy street. Very busy city, and but the downside is a、uh, samurai's、uh, expertise in fighting was no longer as needed. At the end of Edo period, samurai class as a whole was in deep depth. There are the two things I can talk about from individual level or from、uh, samurai class level. So basically, the samurai king ruled Edo, and over about two hundred samurai clans. Rule the rural area, so that's the whole、uh, ruling structure, and they basically earn allowance from the central government. When there's a war, country need them, they fight for、uh, each region, and they get pay. However, if there's no war, you obviously has less income at the individual level. But the other thing I want to share this thing so every two years during the Edo period time, Sumire clan have to go to the Edo. For a costly parade, and that parade is eventually make a lot of samurai cl、uh, clans in deeply depth. I find this、uh, picture online.、Uh, they actually coming from every ruling area coming to Edo.、Um, you know, some clans have to bring around five hundred, six hundred people traveling on the business trip to Edo. And obviously, none of those samurai is actually a business people. They then they don't know how to manage those trips. Uh, the old Asian time parade, but if you look at、uh, the route,、uh, the longest route could be a thousand kilometer, which is roughly six、um, hundred、uh, miles. So long trip back to Asian time, six hundred, three hundred people travel together. You know they need money, and and there was no wall, less income. Those kind of factor make the samurai in debts. They have to find way to make money. So the lower samurai start. Taking the second job, so samurai is the small portion of Japanese population know how to read and write. Obviously, the first job is kind of decent job. They're teaching the kids back to school. Terokuya, that's the particular private school during the Edo period time. You can see what's very interesting. If you look at a teacher here with a lady, female teacher, you know, taking care of the kids, it's very busy classroom. Obviously, kids do things they're supposed to do. They're they're not necessarily following the instruction. And then here we have a two gentlemen. Very likely, they, this there was second job. They used to be a samurai. Now they become a teacher to you know to handle those、uh, messy class. So that's the first type of job. The second job, they actually are making paper umbrellas and and lanterns. So at this moment, no goldfish yet, but the poverty eventually puts them to looking hard to find something else they can they can make money. And the other thing I want to mention, if you look at the social class, samurai was a ruling class. If they take a second job, push them down to the lower social class. But you know. You gotta do what you gotta do. Well, now we talk about a particular、uh, samurai lord.、Uh, his name is Yushi Sato Yanagasiwa. is a samurai and a scholar back to Edo period time. And unfortunately, I was not able to find a Yushi Sato picture, but I was able to find his. His father is a famous samurai、uh, lord. It's called. Yushi Yasu Yanagisiwa. So that his father's picture. So back to 1724,、uh, Yushi Sato brought goldfish to Koryama City when they transferred from Yamanashi Prefecture to Nara. Koryama City has a lot of ponds, had a lot of natural resources, so that's provide a a golden condition、uh, for goldfish keeping. As a matter of fact.、Um, Yushi Sato not only bring the goldfish or the rancho to Nara, but also bring the silkworm、uh, 
uh, to the local city. So he is a great leader, a uh, very generous, and and a care about his people. Have you ever wondering there's so many relation between Japanese rancho versus samurai? They always have a crazy hair uh, versus Japanese rancho wind and very sturdy body a very strong kato padanko. That's kind of a muscular image. Uh, Japanese rancho always carries those characters from samurai. As a matter of fact, this is one of the famous samurai becomes goldfish uh, keeping family. So um, this guy is a very famous. His name is uh, Jiumen Ishigawa. Back to the Sengutu period. Uh, from this uh, Yukiyuji picture, looks like he actually trying to escape from a mansion building. He steal gold and money uh, from the rich people and gave it to poor. Jiumen uh, earned a lot of respect from Japanese people. So my story is his his grand grand grandson's story. If you a big fan of Japanese. Uh, Rancho, you must know Kamiyoshi Ishigawa. He is probably fourth generation under the Jiumen uh, Ishigawa, but he totally transformed from samurai to a famous goldfish keeping. Kamiyoshi, he actually earned the title as the uh, Japanese goldfish master, and then from now we got several uh, descendants after uh, Kamiyoshi. But Kamiyoshi is descendant from Jiumen Ishigawa. The contribution of Ishigawa's work is actually a build the foundation of modern rancho type. You probably heard of Kayuke K. Uh, this is a certain type of Japanese rancho. Actually, I talk about a different type of Japanese rancho through this link, so you may wanna, wanna watch it. And the other thing I wanna talk about is Tosakin's goldfish. And the Tosakin's were first developed by lower ranking samurai. It's actually in the Tosa thief. So this is what I highlight in Koshi Prefecture. One of the story I want to share with you is Tosaki almost extincted during the Second World War in 1945 and the earthquake in Japan back the next year, 1946. That was a disaster back then, so a lot of infrastructure diminished and also a lot of goldfish got distinct. And uh, luckily, uh, Mr. Hiro Tamura, he is the famous uh, Japanese goldfish keeper. He actually found six fish at a local restaurant. So he was able to successfully re uh, revive Tosaki in Koshi. Kind of those, the, the typical picture with a very curly tail, uh, but is, Tosaki is another signature goldfish. Typical people doesn't like uh, the tail without a split. But Tosaki take this to the next level, even though uh, Tosaki uh, does not have a split, they have a beautiful curl at the tip of the um, tail. All right, just like a quick summary. So goldfish was first imported to, uh, from China to Japan back to 1502. Uh, the rich samurai were the first goldfish keeper in Japan. Uh, 250 years of peace in Edo period time diminished the samurai class and samurai start a variety of second jobs, which including the goldfish keeping. And Ranchu and Tosaki are the signature breed developed by Sumerai. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I want to give a special thanks to those of my friends. If you like it, please give me a big like and also subscribe my channel. and You will learn more about goldfish. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.